Joining me right now, back on the show, Dan Hooker. He'll be fighting on UFC on Fox 31, December 15th versus Edson Barbosa. What's going on, Dan? Hey, not much. Just, uh, just chilling. Finished training. You have your own TV show now, Frenemies, with your teammate, mm. Israel mm. Adesanya. How did that all come together? Uh, well, that's just something my manager kind of put together. Uh, he works at like a TV studio, uh, TV station in New Zealand. And so he kind of just twisted our arms and, and we just go in each week and kind of just chat shit and feed off each other. And we do it because we enjoy it. You know, it's just a, a bit of fun at the end of the week. All right, let's get into some MMA talk. John Jones getting a reduced sentence of 15 months for a second violation. USADA. Their reputation, is it ruined with this ruling? Ah, that, that rule applies to everyone, right? That's like, uh, that's like if I got caught, I got like snitch on Israel for something. But we don't cheat, so it's kind of easy for us. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's just the rule. It applies to everyone. I'm sure it's not like an easy out for him. Like he's just forever like labeled himself as kind of like a backstabber. You know what I mean? So, not that he could discredit himself even more, but he managed to somehow. Have you seen the memes that always come out? If somebody actually violated after that came, that news came out, they always said that John Jones, there's a picture of John Jones on the phone calling USADA. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, he, gets, he gets killed in the memes. He's a new crying Jordan face. Like, he, he gets massacred, man. Definitely. Um... UFC 226, you got the first round knockout over Gilbert Burns. Afterwards, you said you're not happy with the performance. Some people would think that you are too hard on yourself, but is that the type of mentality fighters need to be the best in the world? Uh, I think all the best guys I know that I've trained are for like the world champions and the guys that are at this level. Um, they're all hold himself to a pretty high standard and I think that kind of it kind of makes like all the shit people talk like quite easy because we're so hard on ourselves that you know by the time they get around to saying it it's like ah I'm like well past that I'm well past that there's like nothing there's nothing like you can say to me about my performance that I haven't already put on myself but it just comes down to uh, always staying hungry and not being content with like a even a, a good result, not being like content with that, because I've got to the stage because I just keep keep setting myself new standards and and keep striving to be a better fighter. So it's got me to this point. So why would I why would I kind of stop now? Were you somewhat surprised when you connected with that hook to the jaw and he dropped? Because it seemed like that was not even one of your hardest punches. Uh. Nah, he was like already concussed mm -hmm. from early in the fight. Like I, uh, I already knew he was. He said to me after after the right hand, he can't remember a thing. Mm -hmm. And you can you can kind of sense that. So yeah, of course people say I got a bit careless. Yeah, I got careless. The guy's he's halfway home. He's got one foot out the door. Uh, just gotta push him out. It wasn't. You can start being a bit careless, like, once the guy, he, he lost his power, you know what I mean? Like, he he wasn't himself. Like, he is a very dangerous fighter, but he wasn't, he wasn't himself by that stage in the fight. In the last year, how much has disrespect fueled you during your destructive run in the lightweight division? Disrespect. Ah, I, I don't even see it as a bad thing. I, I'm just like, no, look, not everyone is like motivated the same. Not everyone is uh, fueled by the same things. Like, if you like pat me on the back and be like, awesome work, Dan, you're so awesome, you're the man, like, I kind of just get a little bit annoyed. Like, I, I don't really like that. Uh, but when, when someone tells me I can't do something, I just get like this huge chip on my shoulder and I start <laughs> and I, I, I set my I set my mind to it. If someone, you know, people will tell me, Oh, you can't do that, you can't be 
top 10 in the world. You can't be top 15. You can't be ranked. You can't be world champ. Uh, then I set it as a goal. So I'm like more, I don't know where it comes from, man. I guess it's just like driven, driven by negativity as much as positivity. UFC on Fox 31, it's huge exposure on national television against a top 10 guy. What more can you ask for? What more can you ask for? I got it. I got it. I got nothing. There's nothing else that I want. This is the this is the fight I asked for. So uh, I'm just, man, I'm looking forward to this one. You're facing Edson Barbosa. Many would consider this a striker's delight. Do, would you agree? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I'm as I'm as interested as everyone else. You know, people always think like, "Oh, how's this fight gonna go?" Like, shit. If I knew, I'd tell you. But it could go either way. Uh, it's not. It's not till we get in there and we actually challenge ourselves and test ourselves on the day until we find out. You guys both have different styles of stand up. What aspect of your striking arsenal do you believe shines above Barbosa's? Um, I'm trying to think without giving anything away. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm, look, I'm just not going to do this question any uh, any service, like unless I just make something up. Like, oh man, I'll make up some bullshit. Like, yeah, I'm uh, super faster than him. Like. It's not how it works. Like it comes down to to a few small details and a few things that my camp and my team picked up. So I don't want to. I don't want to feed you guys some some bullshit. <laughs> but I think I think I'm better. Barbosa he took three rounds of extreme punishment from Khabib and then went on to take more punishment from Kevin Lee. Do you think? He was the same fighter after those fights. Uh, those are his two. Those are his two most recent. I fought on the same cards as those on. So I was there. I seen it. He's taken like a solid amount of time off from those fights. Um, so I'm sure he's he's well recovered from that. Like I don't think that's going to be hanging around. I think I fought since then. His last fight. His last fight was. Uh, Kevin Lee, right? Yes. And that was the that was when I fought Jim Miller that night. So he's taken like a good amount of time off. So I'm sure I'm expecting like a very good Edson Barboza. You know, I I know he's changed camps. He's training at American Top Team. So I'm sure I'm sure he's he's made big improvements in his game. And I'm I'm not going in there and expecting like a like a worn down Edson. I know you're very loyal to your camp. But when a fighter loses two in a row, moves to, moves his family to another camp, what does that say about his mentality? Do you think? Uh, he's he's trying to get better. Like obviously, um, you know, everyone has their opinions, but like the fighter, the fighter knows best, and and he's gonna he's gonna do the right things for his career. Like if he doesn't feel like he's getting the attention that he needs from the camp he's at, then. Or, or he's he feels like he's not growing and developing. So it comes down to the growth and the development of the fighter. I seen that you dipped in with the Wim Hof method. Are you continually using that in your training? Yeah, I do. I do when I can. Like uh, you know, the ice baths and that. There's some good research behind it, but that comes down to like anything. It's anything. Like if I if I can if I can scrape together anything that's gonna help me improve as a fighter or an athlete as a human being, then I'm gonna look to implement it. We're still a long ways out from the fight. Are you in training camp right now, or are you in pre camp? Yeah, yeah. So pretty much like a like a pre camp camp. <laughs> um, but I'm feeling good at this stage. Like I'm in very good shape for being this far out. Uh, Israel's fighting soon, so I've pretty much already been pushing with him and, and grinding away with him. And there's a few of the other boys fighting on the Adelaide card, Kaikara France. So yeah, man, we're 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 definitely putting in the work. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be super easy 
to be motivated for this fight. Like, I'm not saying it's going to be an easy camp, mm -hmm. but when you're fighting a guy like Ethan Barbosa, it's it's easy. You know what I mean? Like, it's easy to get to the gym. It's easy to give it your best every day. Like, when you fight, say you gave me, like, a mug, you gave me, like, someone that sucks. It's hard to get up in the morning. Like, it's hard to get to the gym. It's hard to push yourself to, like, the places you need to go to get prepared for it, but with a guy like Edson, like I'm, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to focusing on the task. What is the difference between pre-fight camp and fight camp for you? Uh, it's just getting the body ready for fight camp, like touching a bunch of energy systems that you don't, uh, you're not going to use until far later in in the fight camp. Uh, yeah, like a bunch of strength work, a bunch of like technical work, aerobic work. Like it's just, you're focusing on different energy systems. Like I've been doing like a lot of aerobic work mixed with like different stages. You'd have to, you'd have to get my, my strength and conditioning coach on here. I kind of just, I kind of just get to training and he just points at a bunch of things and tells him what to do. And I, I, I get someone that's smarter than you to tell you what to do. <laughs> Definitely. I seen that you've been doing a little yoga too. Yeah, like anything, it's been helping my body. Um, I'm got yeah, I'm starting this camp in very good shape. Like it, it, it helps with like injury prevention, anything. Like I was saying, anything I can do to get ahead, I'm I'm gonna jump on it. You know, a lot of fighters they say when they step in the octagon, they feel like they're at home. You know, you've been in the UFC for a while now, and You've been beating up the top guys in the world for a little bit now. Do you really feel like when you enter that octagon, the, the lights and the cameras, they don't bother you and you can go in there and kind of be at peace and just let things go? It's it's because the like the UFCs you can like mentally run through like the process so many times. Because the UFC is so consistent. Like if they you get a, you're gonna get there on fight week and they're gonna be like, okay, on Saturday at six twenty three you're gonna be making your walk and then Saturday at six twenty three you're like making your walk and it's like the same process every time so it's like very easily very easy to replay that in your mind mentally and prepare yourself for the moment so then you're kind of just more in like a deja vu stage mm -hmm. than being overwhelmed and shocked by the moment. Less than, say, being outside of the UFC when you're just like, oh, yeah, you're going to be on at 8. And then you get there and then, oh, this happened, this happened, this happened. You're not actually on till midnight. And they get some midnight. Oh, no, it's going to be another hour. Oh, yeah, you're going to walk next. Oh, there's a break. Like, it's <laughs> that kind of that kind of throws you around a bit. So when you're fighting on these smaller shows, I feel like it's a lot harder to, to mentally prepare because you don't know, you know, fighting on a new promotion or how they're going to treat you or how it's going to go, as opposed to the UFC where it gets very, it gets very consistent. Before I let you go, I wanted to ask you about Hangman Mentoring Program at Combat Academy. Mm -hmm. How was the whole process of going through the applicants, having the trials, and selecting the winners? Yeah, it was that was really. Cool. So I had like a like a mentorship program uh, at at my gym and kind of set it out there for people to apply. And I had well, I put it up in the morning and went to training, went to another training, taught some classes, came home like eight hours later, checked it, and I had like a hundred emails from people. And I was like, oh shit, I'm gonna have to close this. So I like closed it. <laughs> Close it straight away in like eight hours because I already had to sort through so many emails. Uh, responded to about 60 guys, 60, uh, 65 guys, and 30, I think 34 showed up on the day. So that was like a real high like success rate. And people were saying like, how did you screen like the emails and this sort of thing? But it was, I didn't want the best email writer like i don't want to pick like the guy who can write the coolest email like i just accepted oh yep if you want to do it like this invited those first i just invited like a bunch of those first guys down and and i was very impressed with the how bad these guys wanted it like it was not an easy day at all like we had fitness testing beep testing um a two-hour training session then a two-hour run 
and another hour and a half wrestling session after that. So it was it was grueling. I think the video for that's going to be out pretty soon, and that'll be quite a yeah, quite a good watch. That. All right, UFC on Fox 31, December 15th. Dan Hooker will face Essen Barfosa. Man, this is going to be a huge fight, man. Especially it's on national television. It's going to be on everywhere. Everybody's going to be watching. And you've been impressive for the last year and a half or so. And, uh, man, it's always been good talking to you. Because I've been talking to you every fight, I, I believe. Yeah, right. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dan, for your time, man.